Hello everyone. It's 9 a.m. in Guangzhou, and this is FM user DSTL testing it says hello to you. And today we're going to test the FM user digital studio chess the link system on an island. Called Hailing Island in Yangjiang City, Guangdong Province, China. And if you think this video is very helpful to you, don't forget to subscribe to FM User. And we will update more interesting and practical videos from time to time. And let's get back to the point. So, um, you can see the picture in the camera. And this is where we are heading for. The Hailing Island <laughs> in Yangjiang, Guangdong, China. And in this test, the distance between the chest fitting end and the receiving end is about 10 kilometers. And in fact, this test is divided into two groups. One group is responsible for playing the role of chest fitting signals. One group can control the equipment of the studio, such as the uh, audio and video signal source and coding equipment, while the other group plays the role of signal receiving. They can control transmitting devices and screen display devices. And you can see the two colleagues in the camera. And they're responsible for testing the receiving end, while an other colleague and I are responsible for controlling the chest end. Now we're on a highway and it will take about three hours to get there. In today's test, we plan to test whether the DSL system with 16 signal sources can transmit through high definition video with a bandwidth of about 100 megabits. However, due to the weather and terrain, you know, there are many factors that would affect the bandwidth. However, we're not sure whether the bandwidth has a complete 100 megabits. But at present, the weather seems to be good. <laughs> um, the weather and scenery are both good, but the driving is too slow. Let's speed up. So, uh, we finally arrived to the transmitting end. And Jimmy is going to help us to set up all the equipment of the transmitting end. I hope everything will be fine. So I will show you where the uh, receiving end is. Do you see the corner right here? Yeah. That's about 10 kilometers from the uh, transmitting end. And after Jimmy is setting up all the uh, transmitting end equipment and then we'll go to the uh, receiving end and the project will be we're getting started that's quite a beautiful scene So the uh, police officer is curious about what we are doing on the roof and he's um, asking us about some questions. Thank you, officer. And let me show you the equipment of the test. As one of the best low-cost and high-performed IPTV hardware encoders for live streaming, 
FMUser FB200 encoder is multi-protocol supported. It can be applied in the uncountable streaming platforms such as YouTube and Facebook and is up to 1080p video resolution supported. The encoder of the desktop system tested this time is a 16-way encoder, namely FB216. This is the HDMI allocator. And this is the narrow switch. The power supply for charging. The cables and wires. And a setup box known as the signal source. And the inverter for converting the 12 watts to 220 watts. These are power strips and installation tools and the DSTL bridge and a laptop here that's all we have <laughs> okay and this bunch of wires are the connecting wires mm. and a tripod right there installing the DSTL bridge yes it is let's begin no 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 we should put the tripod down and install it before putting it on sir can you fix it for me? In fact, when I saw these devices for the first time, I really didn't think that this DSTL system could change me the range of 100 kilometers, which is equivalent to the distance from Atlanta to Athens. But my colleague said that this DSTL system can transmit that far. If you use optical cables, the cost is unimaginable. But is this DSTL system so magic as it was told? Can't wait and witness the miracle of it. <laughs> Jimmy is connecting all the wires to the uh, FB200 encoder as well as the HDMI allocator and the network switch as well The light here hasn't turned on yet. This light is not connected properly. Is it this light? The light of the encoder is not on. Encoder 96 can work normally, but encoder 95 can't. It seems that this encoder is not working. Maybe this slide is not connected properly. How about trying to put this encoder in other location? Done. 
A few moments later. So our technician Jimmy will help us first connect the test equipment and set all the parameters. And if there's no accident, I just need to observe the data here quietly. Never mind. Let's introduce all the equipment of DSTL to you first. We can see that there is an HDMI splitter here, which can copy one signal sources into 16 identical signals. Because of the uh, limitations of conditions, we only test 16 signal sources today. Of course, you can use 100 signal sources at the same time if the bandwidth and the code rate is allowed. Then we can see this little pink machine right here. It's our famous FB200 encoder. Its working principle is to convert the analog signal of the signal source into the IP network signal and send it to the big eye right here. Um, this is the wireless bridge equipment. It can convert the wire network into the wireless network and transmit all the IP network signals to the receiving end. At the same time, the IP network signal at the transmitting end is transmitted by the bridge equipment at the receiving end. About 10 kilometers from here and it is changed into the analog signal through the FB300 transcoder. FB300 is one of the best hardware transcoders in the live streaming field. The function of FB300 is to receive the IP signals transmitted by FB200 and decode the IP signal into the analog signals for use. And then we can play the program. And colleagues that we're receiving and will test the total bandwidth of the bridge and the bandwidth occupied by these 16 signal sources and observe the actual video playback in fact, including whether the video plays smoothly or an accident. We only need to deal with the problem after the accident, such as restarting the computer device that suddenly crashed and adjusting the bridge device according to the instruction of the colleague at the receiving end. The biggest characteristic of this DSTL system is that the transmission audio and video signals will not be distorted and it is not easy to interfere. Moreover, the use of a network system means that you do not need to lay optical cables at a high cost. With this cheap and high quality equipment such as the FB200 encoder and the FB300 transcoder at the receiving end can achieve the effect of long distance, high income and low cost. This means that with the DSTL system, you can support multi-channel signal sources and full high definition high frame video over a distance of up to 100 kilometers at an ultra high low cost. It is so powerful. As you can see, our engineer Jimmy has installed the DSTL equipment of the transmitting end, which is the equivalent of a stereo. And I guess they are moving to the receiving end, which is about 10 kilometers from here and install the receiving end equipment and get ready to test it. We'll see about it. Good morning everyone. Um, this is FM user. The STL test team says hello to you. And uh, we have met some problems yesterday and for we did them properly set up the wireless bridge and all the parameters and uh... so Jimmy arrived at the receiving end for a half hour later and uh, the test has begun right after he assembled up all the test equipment
but we actually have some problems then. We had a first video call at about 5.31 p.m. and I was told to move the wireless bridge equipment because the receiving end couldn't receive any full signals from us. It is quite weird because I thought that Jimmy had installed all the test equipment. So I did as told, but it didn't work though. We tried time after time, but no matter how hard we tried, you know, to reset the wireless bridge equipment or to adjust its facing directions the way it could be, it still didn't work. So we had to give up on further attempts to try. It was lane 6 where we packed everything up and uh, we didn't realize at first that we did successfully assemble up the hardware test equipment but actually it was very small incorrect software setting of the bridge equipment of both sides Then Jimmy forgot to set the indoor option of the end bridge equipment to the dynamic option on the wireless bridge equipment which caused the receiving end bridge equipment to receive only intermittent signals rather than the complete ones. Therefore, the first day of the DSTL test ended in failure. It is quite disappointing that because not everything goes as, as we planned before. We were about to end this test on the first day but then we had to put our hope on the next coming day, hoping that everything will be on the right way. So we're going to do another test on the same spot, the chain spinning end, you know. And uh, you can see that our technician guys are, our technician guys are trying to set up all the cables again for the test. And uh, I hope everything is going well today. Um, you can see that it's been a little cloudy today, and uh, I don't know whether it's gonna it is going to affect how the STL works, and I just hope everything's going well. You can see that our technician guys are trying to assemble all the cables up, and uh, for the DSTL test today. I really hope that it works. It seems like Jimmy has installed all the cables for us and they're moving to the receiving end. We're doing good. Okay, you got it boys. Let's move to the receiving end. So uh, it's half past 10 a.m. in the morning and this is Ray from the transmitting end reports to you and our, our technician guy Jimmy is moving to the receiving end and he will be there after like uh, half an hour and if nothing really happens the second test of the DSTL system will be finished by today 
and uh, I hope everything is going well. You can see that all the equipment are properly set up from the cables, the power sources, and the FB200 encoders to the HDMI allocator and the network switch and to the big guide right here. So uh, I just hope that everything is working well. A few moments later. So uh, it's 11 a.m. in the morning and this is Ray reporting to you at the transmitting end. And I was told that the Jimmy you know, the technician guy has just arrived to the receiving end and he's like uh, right here. Do you see that? The corner? Yeah, that's the receiving end. And if nothing really happens, we can go on the test. I hope everything is going well. And what we're going to do at the transmitting end is to make sure that the receiving end can receive the same signals you know, in the camera you can see that the video Oh, it seems like the receiving end has already to begin the test Hi there, I'm ready for the test. Do I need to introduce how the test is going? Yes, please, Jimmy. Okay, all right, all right. Are you ready for the video recording? Sure. All right. Um, as you can see, all the test equipment on the receiving end are well installed. And this is the DSL bridge which is used to receive the signals from the side. Clearly, as you may see, you're in round that way. And the signals will be transmitted into the narrow switch. And the signals will be first received by the FB300 transcoders right here. And finally, be transmitted to the video display. The video can be displayed smoothly as you can see. Then we're going to test the actual playback data. Okay, okay. We'll see you soon. I'll be hanging out. Now you can see that the bandwidth we have at present is about 80 megabits. Do you see where I'm pointing at? The number has come to around 80, and the bandwidth is stable for the time being. The bandwidth is very stable indeed. We're doing great. From the data feedback of the total bandwidth of the DSL bridge, we know that the number is stable at around 80 megabits. The total bandwidth for the 16 channels video is at around 40 megabits.
And our technician Jimmy has successfully received the signals from us and he's about 10 kilometers away from here and we're going to observe some data. <laughs> you know, when checking the signal strength of the bridge in the set part, the value is negative. Do you see that? This number is negative. And, but the larger the number, the better. That is, uh, the closer to zero, the strongest signal strength of the bridge it has. So, uh, when you think that um, the signal strength is not enough, you only need to move the bridge equipment. To make sure the signal strength is close to the place where the value increases. So, uh, many customers come to FM user and ask so many questions about the DSTL system that how can I transmit those analog signals into IP signals from end to end, you know, for the people like uh, 10 kilometers or 100 kilometers away from the signal resource? Is there really a system that don't cost you much and can help you transmit those signals that far? I think uh, this DSL system from FM user can do it. Hi there! And we have already finished the test now, and here are some data feedback for you. Okay, let me switch the camera. It's all right. You can see that you're in the same direction where I'm pointing at, but the difference is that the DSTL system signal reaches its peak, indicating that both DSTL bridges are installed correctly. That DSTL bridge signal strength has reached its peak. And let's move to the data feedback. Do you see that? The light is too much right now to clearly observe the screen. Well, this is the signal strength for the DSTL bridge. But the larger the number, the better. The, 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 the strongest signal strength of the bridge it has. The closer to zero, the better. The greater the negative value of signal strength is, the higher the signal strength of the DSTL bridge is. Its number is minus 58. It is quite a strong signal so far. You may also see that the occupied bandwidth for the 16 channels video is at around 40 megabits. The bandwidth can be set through the background of the bridge. 42.7 megabits is the bandwidth for 1080p video of 16 channels in this test. Actual bandwidth in total on that day is at around 80 megabits. Then for all the equipment right here, the monitor is now playing 1080p video smoothly. As for the total bandwidth, you can see that the total bandwidth is at around 80 megabits. And the test has come to an end. We will pack everything up. We'll see you soon. 
Towards the end of the test, we also tested whether the FM user DSL works normally when it is placed to face the indirectly or reversely. We try two ways: place the DSL bridge in directions deviation and place the DSL bridge completely reversely. But no matter which method, DSL system can still transmit and receive 16 channels of 1080p video signals completely and smoothly. Therefore, we come to the conclusion that when the transmitting point and the receiving point are visible to each other, DSL can of course be easily connected and used, even in the case of worse conditions, such as there are barriers between the two points or they're not visible to each other. FM user's DSL system nice. can still work normally if the original provided bandwidth is 100 megabits and with 40 megabits bandwidth left under the blocking, the DSL can still work stably and efficiently by reducing a certain bandwidth. Do not underestimate the DSL system of FM user as one of the best low-cost and long-distance transmission systems to transmit IP network signals, FM user's DSTL system can not only be used in studio signal transmission, but also widely used in various scenarios requiring multi-point IP network signal transmission, such as when your customers are in such a scene. People living on an island, they do not have advanced broadcasting facilities, not that they have enough money, but they want to receive TV signals from other islands several kilometers or even tens of kilometers away so that you can watch TV programs smoothly and happily. Please choose DSTL system. Where customers are in such a scene, they have thousands of acres of land and they are still using those obsolete monitoring equipment. When expensive monitoring equipment is used for monitoring, but it is unable to effectively supervise every corner of their property. Please choose DSL system. When your customers are in such a scenario, affected by the new coronavirus epidemic, many hospitals have to accept those different patients in order to prevent the secondary infection brought by the new coronavirus to the receiving hospital. If you want to achieve actual long-range audio and video signal, select DSTL system if you want to spend less time and energy on hardware performance and paid more attention to software performance transmission at low cost. FM user's DSTL system is absolutely your choice. So uh, this is today's DSTL test. And um, if you want more information about the DSTL system, welcome to subscribe to FM user. We will update more interesting and new things from time to time for you. See you next time.